Hello there, you amazing viewers and subscribers. Welcome to a brand new Doctor Who related video for today. So in this video, it is going to be a review and this review is on Doctor Who season 18. Now, season 18 was actually broadcast from the 30th of August to the 31st of March, 1980 to 1981. And it is Tom Baker's last season. And some things do happen in this season. We have Tom Baker's departure. We have Leona Ward's departure. We have... John Leeson's departure, aka it's K9's departure. As well, we have an introduction to Nissa, Adric, and of course Tegan, played by Janet Fielding, Matthew Waterhouse, and Sarah Sutton. Also, it is an introduction season to Anthony Ainley as the master, as well as Jeffrey Beavers, because Jeffrey Beavers takes over the role from Peter Pratt, who played the master in The Deadly Assassin. Also, it contains over seven great stories. Over this long time period, it was it was broadcast for like six six to seven months, really. Over the Christmas period as well, I believe they stopped. I believe they stopped over Christmas period and then carried on in the January from in nineteen eighty one. I'm not really too sure, but I don't know if it went over Christmas or did they take a break over, like over the Christmas break. So that's the one thing I don't know about this season. Some things do change in this, so before I get into the actual main season's review and what I think of the stories and other stuff, so how can I tell you about the season? So we have a brand new show producer, aka John Nathan Turner. Now this is the first season to be to be have John Nathan Turner as the main show, uh, the show producer. I mean, he was in the backstage of Doctor Who in the Wayne Williams era, so it's through seasons 15, 16, 17. So now he takes over and he becomes, well, really one of the long, longest um, show producers of Doctor Who, really, as he, as he was in it from this season all the way down to the end season, season 26, he's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 26. Yeah, nine year, nine seasons, nine seasons, nine years in show of the Doc and Doctor Who general. I have to say, yeah, there's some good stuff in this season. There's only like one really, 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 really bad story. And the rest are okay. The rest are good. And apart from one that is, I do don't, I'm not really into that often. But it has changed because I have recently rewatched the East Space Trilogy. And I will be doing a review on the East Space Trilogy. Um, that will be soon. Because I've got a whole new percentive on... Warriors Gate, where I did my three least favourite stories of the Tom Baker run. It's basically moved up a little bit. It's not the worst for me now. I do enjoy it a bit more than I used to since I gave it another rewatch. This is the third rewatch, really. So, what do I personally think of this new season? So, of this season, well, it's a good season to be honest with you. Tom Baker has a new costume. It goes from the kind of like pat different patterned clothing and the long scarf has changed into a burgundy colour. And Tom becomes a lot more serious in this, se in this season as well. From seasons 12, 13 and 14, he is serious with a little bit of humour. And then for seasons 15, 16, 17, he went into a lot of humour. And season 17 is actually one of the ones that people don't really like as much for Tom's run. I don't really mind it. I think it's still got some good stories in there, like The City of Death or Shard. I mean, Shard just should have been part of it, but it wasn't. It was actually cancelled because of budget, like budget cuts and stuff. And a strike at the BBC. But The Horns, Nightmare of Eden is actually quite good, and so is The, Norn, um, the Horns on Armour. Quite enjoy that. The weakest of that season is The da Death of the Daleks, which I will do talking about that. So as I say, this season was actually broadcast from the 30th of August 1980 to the 31st of March 1981, containing over seven stories, which is The Leisure Hive, Magloss, Full Circle, State of Decay, Warrior's Gate, Keeper of Trocking, and The Gopperless. Now, I do have these um, quite a few times, so if I can show you what I quickly got of them. So for the VHS range, I've only got three stories of these on VHS, which is... Magloss, Keeper of Trocken, and of course the Gopolis. Where for DVD, I actually have got all of the DVDs for this one. So I've got The Leisure Hive, Magloss, Full Circle, State of Decay, Warrior's Gate, Keeper of Trocken, 
and Legopolis. Also, I am very, very proud to say here they are in the Season 18 box set in uh, on Blu-ray. So, I absolutely do like, as you can tell, I have, like, some of these stories. I've got them, like, on two different formats on DVD and Blu-ray. Three of these stories I got on VHS. I don't really think I've got any on Target Novel Book yet. So, I have to go for my Target Novels because I've actually put them somewhere safe because I've actually wanted to keep them safe. So, I quite enjoy this season. It's a great Tom Baker season. It's Tom Baker's last season, and he's not, like, silly as he has been in season 17, but he goes to a more serious persona. And I do like Tom's runs. So, The Leisure Hive is considered to be the weakest story of the season, of the out of the arc, really. I mean, you've got the Doctor, Romana and K-9 relaxing on Brighton Beach until the Doctor forgets to get K-9's water systems right and K-9 goes and blows up when he lands in the sea. <laughs> uh, so anyway, without fixing K-9, they end up going to the Leisure Hive planet so as a bit of a holiday where they have to come and help a scientist with technologics. It's not a great story. I mean, I do like the Mavaz the Mavazazis. They consider to be the villains in this, but they actually turn out to be the good guys, where it's the ones with the, like, pyramid heads, with the bobbles, and then they fall off and die. When they fall off and die, you know. It's really okay. Seeing Tom's full costume in this story is absolutely great. I actually do like his costume. I am actually planning to cosplay this variant of Tom Baker, because I do love his season 18 outfit. It's my favourite outfit of Tom's, really. I will have to do a video of how I rank each of the Doctor's outfits, because this is my all-time favourite Tom Baker one. He matches his persona really, really well. He's, yeah, okay, Tom in this isn't liking this story. You can tell he's actually really driveled out in this. He's bored, and to because he's suffered... Really, with John Nathan Turner, because John Nathan Turner wanted to change the show, and Tom Baker was used to the show being in his way. So, him and John Nathan Turner did use to backlash, specifically over the story as well. So, just to try and pee Tom off a lot more, I think they literally made him go old, just for the sake of it, really. Um, the next story, which is Maglos, we have a shape shifting, captious alien creature named Maglos. So the actual story, Maglos, is actually about the alien creature called Magnus, who kidnaps a human, shapes get like gets his body DNA, shape shifts into him. Then he shapes shifts into the Doctor, so he can try and get hold of the of the helix thing. So Maglos can try and destroy the galaxy, but he is stopped by the Doctor. So it's a little bit of a double ganger episode, which is quite enjoyable. And also, it's the last story to have Jacqueline Hill. A.K.A. who played Barbara White in the first Doctor's stories. Well, it's around about season one and season two. Because she played the f the first Doctor's companion, Barbara. And then this is her last appearance in Doctor Who. And it is a great last appearance. And I actually do like these. I mean, I do think some of the people like this in this... Um, I can't think of their names. Like, with the really short, long, like, short hair, blonde. They do kind of remind me a bit of the Romulans from Star Trek. But... It's still a kind of a good way, even a, like the outfit does remind me a bit of the Romulans from Star Trek. Mainly around about TNG, DS9, Voyager, Enterprise era before you get to the... Before anybody says, oh, what about regional series or Discovery or whatever? No one knows about them. So, anyway, that's a bit coming up a bit of topic. So, they do look a bit like Romulans for me from out of Star Trek. Uh, the next story is... Full circle. Now, at the end of Maglos, the Time Lords basically contact the Doctor in his Titus to ask him to bring back Romana. Anyway, Romana doesn't want to go back to Gallifrey. Well, who can blame her? Uh, she She's like happily being travelled. So when we actually open up to the season, into the story of the season, we actually have the Doctor program the Titus to go to Gallifrey. Romana's there sulking after they dropped off the human that Maglos used to shapeshift into. Basically, he ended up um, going back to Earth, uh, talking, back, talking back to Earth, and then carried on to go towards Gallifrey. But an absolutely thing does happen. I mean, the whole, tar the whole TARDIS team, including the TARDIS, is pulled into East Space, which is negative coordinates. East Space, negative, neg negative. Oh, I can't. F Sorry, I get confused with it because you have N space for negative coordinates and then you have E space for negative. That's it. Negative and negative. 
Anyway, never mind about that. Um, anyway, I do quite enjoy this story. So when they land on the planet thinking it's Gallifrey, because the scanner shows the Doctor that he's on Gallifrey. So when you see him walking out the tide, he goes, Romana! Romana! And then she comes out, finds out they're not on Gallifrey, and he goes, this isn't Gallifrey. I absolutely love it. He goes, this isn't Gallifrey. I love the British there trying to fix the tires as well with K9, and then Adric bangs through the door. So when he goes to investigate on the planet, like with the Martian, with, they actually call these people Marsh Marshmen at this point because they're like coming out of the water. Uh, like these, these are the Marshmen, not the people from Mars. I absolutely like this because this is Matthew Waterhouse's introduction, introduction story as Adric. And it's a really great actual introduction story. I do like it. Even though I do think he brags about his badge of math, 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 excuse me, math, math, magnificent. I can't say the actual word, sorry. His badge of maths. Let's say that. His badge of maths. Um, he's too busy showing off with his brother, like to his brother and his brother's gang to try and steal watermelons kind of watermelons but inside the watermelons are little spider creatures that when they actually get hold of you and take over they get bitten by a spider like Romana does find out in later on in the story I do love the story there's some great bits in it I like the bit when you have Adric like pressing the TARDIS button to take off if the out of the cave that leaves Romana there and then it goes to the Starliner and then when the doctor's there like talking to the people in the Starliner he goes good what is it he goes good heavens it's Romana. So when he goes to the side, he goes, Romana? Ah. And then this girl comes out, and then he's lads. He goes, Adric, what's this? Noah's Ark? Where's Romana? She's in the cave. What cave? <laughs> and he pokes her in. He goes, I like that bit. That's absolutely bit. What's this, Adric? Noah's Ark? I absolutely do like that. Tom Baker does a great performance of that as well. He's just there surprised, and he goes, Ah, Romana? Romana? <laughs> I love that. And then when you see Romana get infected with the spider chemicals that makes her connected to the marsh people. That's a really great story as well. So, jumping into the fourth story of the season, which is State of Decay, which is the Doctor versus an old alien race that the Time Lords were in war with. And it is the last of the vampires. So, here is Doctor Who's State of Decay. And it's a really great story. Very... It doesn't really fit into this season really well. I think if this was in season 13, it would slot in really, really well. But it's still very good, actually. I like the ancient vampires. I like the bit with the Doctor programs. They're old, um, spaceship, the rocket to shoot off and land back down straight in the middle of the giant vampire that's underneath the ground. That's coming out of the ground um, to, that literally lands into his chest unit. And then he basically dies. I think that's a great way, to be honest with you. I do like the way they do the kind of design of the vampires where you see them dying in a way i like the way you just see them like going oh like the way they are then they go old and then you just see their bodies turn to dust quite enjoyable and even though the doctor is like they're trying to take adric back to the starliner at the end of the episode it gets completely wrong so jumping into the fifth story of the season which is called warrior's gate now this one i have rewatched recently with the whole e-space trilogy I absolutely do like this story now. I, I never really liked it. I've only watched it twice. Once when I had it on VHS and then on the DVD. When I had it on the DVD first, I never really watched it that often. But then I watched it on the Blu-ray when it came out in 2019. I absolutely like rewatched it. I'm rewatching it all on Blu-ray at the moment. But I've already rewatched them all on DVD, but I'm rewatching them on the Blu-ray. So there will be a review coming out on season 18 because it is a good season, to be honest with you. I did used to own State of the Warriors Gate on VHS, but unfortunately I can't find that. I mean, I lost all of my old VHS tapes. I think I got rid of them all when I started collecting the DVDs. So now I'm going back to the VHSs to build upon the collection. I really need to track down the East Space Trilogy on VHS again. Because it, it's actually a great trilogy, to be honest with you. I absolutely like this one, though. you got the lion, like these kind of lion creatures that are sensitive to time. I like the bit with Warrior's Gate. And then at the end of it, you have the departure from Romana and K-9, which feels very, very sudden, really, for the Yana Wood. And I think I do like the goodbye, really, when he gives her K-9 and he goes, K-9, you've been fine with you behind the mirrors. I won't. I won't forget you. You will. You will always be reminded of them all. 
I have to do like Tom Baker in this story as well. I love the bit with the people when they're there, they're capturing these alien creatures just so they can try and get out of the gateway. And it goes very, very wrong. Absolutely love it. Uh, the next story of the season, it's personally one of my favourite stories of the season. It is The Keeper of Troc. And I absolutely love this one because it does an unexpected twist at the end of part four. It does a very unexpected twist. And you won't even imagine watch when you watched it for the very first time, you wouldn't think who it is at the end of part four. But it is the reveal of the master. So the master basically comes back, played by Jeffy Beavers in this. So with the Doctor and Adric back in end space, they're in the middle of travelling, they get visited by the keeper of Trakin. So when he's there showing the Doctor through the scanner what's gone up wrong, and then the appear of the Malka, and then somehow evil's going across the planet, so he has the Doctor to drop in and try, and you know what he, you know the Doctor, just, if he knows there's evil, he goes and sorts it out, doesn't he? But halfway through this, he gets basically blamed for the Keeper's death in the end of part one, when he's there talking and he goes, Console, you see what happened? Your Keeper was attacked. I absolutely agree like that. I like the bit with the Malka as well, because you wouldn't expect it from a statue that just come to life. Like, he's like there, and then all of a sudden his eyes come to life with the red, ready for eyes. And the way you see it move is absolutely, absolutely epic. I absolutely like the way the Malka moves. And now when you have that whole reveal with Cassia, where she's there trying to get the source for the Malka, and then she's there screaming, and then all you hear is this TARDIS noise, and the Malka is inside... The, the keeper's chair cassie has been disintegrated somewhere she died because of the master using the malka but aka the malka is actually the master's tardis well one of his tardises because he has two tardises really he has a tardis inside the tardis which is really really good, good in a way you think about it <laughs> i like the bit where he's there trying to talk to the fourth doctor and he goes well well what do you think of my new ship doctor of course the master i like the way he goes Trying to like thinking about he's going to jump into the doctor's body, and then because of the interference by Nissa and Adric, the source kind of like goes wrong, and the mass is there with the Malkus Tardis really blowing up inside. He's there screaming, going, Aah! and then the doctor literally escapes by going to the door of the shields, and he goes, Adric, free, free, seven. And then I just, like, I do love that. And when you have the really, really good windy effects for that story as well, quite enjoyable. And then I absolutely do love it where you just appear at the end. You just see the Master's second TARDIS like they're in the cons like in the console um, chamber. And then Tremus being absolutely stupid goes and talks to it and he goes, Oh, this is so the Master comes out going all really creepy going, So, a new body at last. And then he morphs into Tremus's body, which means... Tremus goes from this really aged person to black hair, black beard, really, really short. And then it is the master. And then the master literally moves his hand and goes, So, a new body at last. <laughs> and he goes into his TARDIS. And then this is there going, Father, where are you? And then the titles just end up. It's Keeper Trakin. I absolutely do love that story. I'm going to do a poll with you on Keeper Trakin, I think, tomorrow. Because it is just a great story. I absolutely love it. I'm going to give it a rewatch as well later on as well. I think I'm going to rewatch it on Blu-ray before I give these stories proper reviews. I'm just reviewing this season the way I've seen it on the DVD out when I was rewatching the DVDs. The other, which nobody knows I've done that because I normally I don't always post on Facebook what I'm watching. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But lately I've been rewatching whole of season 18 on DVD. I finished it last night, so I'm going back and rewatching them on the Blu-ray. Yes, I am very, very sad. I watched them on DVD and then I go back and watch them on DVD. Sorry, that makes no sense. I watch them on the DVD and then I watch them on the Blu-ray. Shoot me. I love Doctor Who. I can watch, If I got them on DVD and Blu-ray and VHS, I will watch them three times over. Sue me. Right, a little bit. So jumping into the seventh and last story of the season, Legopolis, which is Tom Baker's last ever story as the fourth Doctor. So, this is the one where we actually have Anthony Ailey as the master full-time now, after taking over Trimus' body. So, when you open up from the main credits, you see an old police box with this policeman. Then you hear a TARDIS taking over the police box. And then, all of a sudden, you hear the master's laugh. And then, you hear the, his tissue minimalator. 
And then all of a sudden, you got the fourth doctor in the TARDIS with Adric talking about going to Logopolis to try and get the dimensions working so he can actually change it from the police box so he can hide from the master. But he has to go on Earth to measure a police box. Now, I absolutely love this because it's an actual great scenario. You have a police box. So anyway, it's not like a police box in a police box. It's that you have a TARDIS in a TARDIS in a TARDIS in a TARDIS in a TARDIS. In a way. And I absolutely love it. Especially when you, in the part two, when the doctors there going, I should materialize the TARDIS on the water. And open the door. And then he goes to Adric goes, can you swim? <laughs> I absolutely love that idea. And then when the doctor and Adric's there and the door's like this, like they're trying to hold back the door and he's like, that's funny. There should be some pressure here. And then he opens it. He's at the tires landed on a barge. <laughs> it's really funny. And then you've got the watcher just standing on top of this bridge watching him. So Tom does go up and talk to the watcher and the watcher does basically go and tell him some stuff, and which we don't know. And then when you see come back to the title, goes, I have to repair for the worst. I love the bit with Tegan as well, because when she walks into the titles from the, when they're actually on the like motorway bit, she gets lost. So when her auntie Finissa goes looking for her, she meets the master and then she gets shrunken down into a life-size doll. Yeah. The master, the master really uses his tissue and linen paper. On that woman as well, and she's there shrunk. Which is a really gruesome way, really. And he does it to quite a few people. He even does it to the Logopolans. He does it to quite a few times. And then, with the Master's interference at Logopolis, you kind of see the Monitor just basically disappear out of existence. And the, the Master's even there saying how horrible it is. So, when they go back to Earth to get to the Pharos Project to try and stop the universe from being destroyed... The Master comes up with this really, really stupid end, like idea to take over the universe once again. And he does an absolutely message saying, People of the universe, please attend quietly, because the future of will depend on off you all. Now, the view of war is simple. And I love the bit of the Master just there, like, goes, it's all mine. <laughs> it's all mine. And the Doctor goes, not why that cable's intact. I love the bit of the Doctor and the Master like, having that little bit of a battle on top of the um, radio alien dish. And then after the master, the Doctor falls to his death after pulling off the cable, even though you have a great sequence of his regeneration, because you, you do see a couple of villains from the Tom Baker era. You see, we basically see a Santaran, we see Daleks, we see Davros, we see Cybermen. Saigons, we even see the Black Guardian, and he even says, Doctor, you shall die for this. And then when you have Tom falling to his death, and then when you have all the companions like coming around the Doctor, and they're all saying, Doctor, Doctor, Doctor. And then you see some of the other past companions for the Doctor's mind, like Sarah Jane, Brickadier, Harry Sullivan, Leela, K9 Mark 1, K9 Mark 2, Romana 1, and Romana 2. And then you get cut out of Adric's voice, and he's just there smiling, going, It's the end. The moment has been prepared for. And then when you see the Watcher just walk into Tom's body, that kicks off the regeneration, and he regenerates into the Fifth Doctor, played by Peter Davison. And Peter Davison just stands up smiling, it like sits up a bit, going like smiling, and it cuts to that. I absolutely do like this. Logopolis is a good regeneration story, even though it does drown out a bit. People have, I have heard people say that Logopolis and the End of Time does kind of like like try and drag out a bit of depression into it but i don't really see it i don't really see it in logopolis i see it a bit in the end of time with the 10th doctor being all mopey and droney oh i'm going to die some i'm gonna die i don't want to go shut up tenant i don't care i absolutely do like this story tom baker is great as the fourth doctor and this is his last season as the fourth doctor plus halfway through the season was being broadcast that he actually married liana ward who played Romana, his companion this season as well, in a way. I absolutely do like the season. Season 18 is a great season too. It's it's a really, really for, um, good like finale for Tom Baker's run. Seven great stories. Even though the, the Louis is the leisure hive, but then the strongest point for me, I have to say, is the Keeper of Truck. And I absolutely love Keeper of Truck. And it's the best Tom Baker story out there not the best but it's the best one this season it's even better than the deadly assassin so let me know in the comments what you think of season 18 is it one of your favorite seasons do you like tom baker's burgundy outfit let me know thank you for watching please do like subscribe and share and have a great day 
and thank you for being magnificent Doctor Who fans. And thank you to all the support you're giving me to my channel and all the nice feedback I've been getting off some of you. Thank you for watching and have a great Doctor Who day.